It's me and Keisha. I'm here with this week's All T All Shade Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 3, Episode 5. So we start off this episode with A1 Sauce and Lyrica. Their mothers are still acting like two big old banshee whores in the restaurant. So security makes the mamas leave and he gives her that old Zell cubic zirconia nugget ass ring he got from the mall. And she is elated, honey. She is excited static over that nugget ring so um then they switched to pierce face she in the studio and the song didn't sound bad the song was actually cute and it was catchy but it was heavily auto-tuned i mean miss girl must cannot carry a tune at all so tia marie is in the studio with her and i was just wondering like has sierra marie given up on her singing career and why the fuck she ain't got no storyline this year why is she the friend of this season like she ain't got nothing going on with her storyline no more i guess since she's not attached to ray j anymore so miss girl you better find you a storyline for you not be on her next season you better come up with something bitch so pierce face tells tiara about kaisha hitting her up on social media dming her and shit and how how kaisha has started this makeshift ass rap career where she making diss records and shit i'm like girl this is what side bitches do now like <laughs> ain't nobody got time for this foolishness so, uh, the girl Kaisha has been telling her, you know, she can't wait for they run into each other because it's going to be, you know, I guess some beef or whatever. And Tierra Marie says that, you know, she hopes that she's there when they run into each other. And so, uh, Pierce Face then says that she's going to perform at Open Mic Night. And I was like, okay, well, that's just a segue for Kaisha to run into you. So, Nikki and Rosa are swapping spit and pretending to be lipstick lesbians, but you're not fooling anybody. Um, so she then leaves Rosa to go see Safari, and they swapping spit and tonguing each other down. I'm like, I know all y'all got mono. All y'all motherfucking asses got mono. Hold on. Hey, girl, I'm filming right now. I'm going to call you in 10 minutes. Bye. Sorry about that. So... Nikki, Tiara, and Nia are at a dance class and they trying to learn how to pop their pussy for a real nigga. Nikki tells them that she's fucking with a girl and a guy and they are shocked by this news. So she tells them that it's Rosa Acosta and Safari. So they didn't really trip off Rosa, but they all had a, a you know a, a comment to say about Safari. But before we even get to that, I was just peeping out Tiara Marie's titties in her confessional. Them two motherfucking titties look like two sacks of sugar. God damn it, her titties big. God damn it, she make my titties look like motherfucking apples. <laughs> like, God damn. So, um, they, uh, Tiara and Nikki both think that Safari is messy and that he's a lame for suing Nikki and about how he always talking about her on the blogs. They just think it's messy and not a good look for Tiara, uh, for, uh, Nikki. But she's more concerned about juggling two motherfucking people and how she's lying to them. And they think that, you know, it's wrong for her to be lying to both of them and she needs to come out and tell the truth. So Ray J Princess Lyrica and A1 Sauce at the roller skating rink. And this nigga up here looking like mamas from mama's family with them fucking pearl earrings in his ear and them fucking pearl necklaces and shit i just do not like this whole aesthetic he's going for this whole grandma realness i just i don't I, it irks so lyrics lyrica tells them about uh their mama's fighting and a1 thinks they should just go on a lope and so she says you know she'll think about it so the best part of this whole episode, Pierce Face is at the open mic night, lip singing her ass off, giving us a whole Britney Spears impersonation. So I'm just looking at her like, why ain't your hair ever done? Like, this is the first thing I'm peeping. Why ain't your hair ever done? Like, you at open mic night and you out in a whole Charlotte Roos outfit. Bitch, I know you had at least $50 left over to get your hair done. Like, her hair always looks a mess. Like, you need to divorce this nigga just off the street. And he got you on this motherfucking reality show looking like $5. And he looked halfway decent every motherfucking episode. Like, how your nigga look better than you? That shows a big representation of y'all relationship. When your nigga look better than you, there's a problem. So, Tiara Marie at the motherfucking open mic night looking like she just came from parent-teacher conferences. I don't know what's going on with her aesthetic this season. Ain't neither one of them bitches checks clearing. So, after she gets done performing, and they get the talking and then the MC come out and announce Kyrek coming to the stage straight from Chicago and I'm like who the fuck is a Kyrek Jesus and then here comes Kaisha she come out looking like a fly girl looking like an extra from stepping up too I'm like bitch where are you going girl with this get up on so she 
says that she joined the open bike night because she just want Pierce face to listen to her so she can get her story across. And then she gets to rap about how she been fucking with this nigga for 12 years on the weekends, on holidays and shit. And when the kids get out of school early and all this old bullshit. So Pierce face is booing her. She's like, boo, boo, go home. And then Kaisha's rapping and shit. And Pierce Face stand up was like, bitch, I dare you to come over here. Tierra Marie jump up and hug motherfucking New York company blazing and shit. And then next thing you know, Kaisha rushes over there to punch her, but she doesn't punch her. She just lunges and grabs her. They grabbing at each other like two cats and shit. Like, rawr, rawr. and I'm like, why ain't nobody swinging, y'all? This is the first time they let y'all motherfuckers finally get at each other and ain't neither one of y'all swinging. Tierra Marie little baby hands try to hit the girl. She like, ugh. Uh, but it don't reach. And <laughs> then fucking um what's her name? Pierce face wig fall off. And you see that she had a handful of motherfucking braids going to the back with her little jail down baby hers. And this whole time I'm sitting there thinking that she just had a whole nasty ass old weave in her head. And that was a new wig. She said that was her new performance wig. Girl, how much you pay for that wig? Five dollars. You got that on the clearance rack? My little wig's over there that I got online look better than that shit that you got up in your motherfucking head. That wig looks so nasty. You, girl, you lying. Talking about you just bought that wig. Ain't no way. This bitch don't even know how to lay her baby hairs down right. Girl, I was so mad. I was more mad at that. Then that little weak ass fight they had. So she trying to hold on to the wind, trying to slap it back on her head. Kaisha and her jail down size, looking like she 1992 and shit. Her hurt, her, her jail all crunched up and shit in her head, her hair all fucked up. Girl, it was just, it was atrocious. That was just a ghetto and I felt like I was watching a fight straight up from like 1996. Like that was the worst thing I've ever seen in my whole entire life. So Fizz and A1 sauce and having drinks. And Safari shows up looking like a White Walker <laughs> from Game of Thrones. So Safari says he came to talk to Fizz about Nikki. He asked him, you know, like, how is she in a relationship? Why y'all stop talking? And Fizz says that, you know, she was always unavailable and hard to communicate with. And Safari says, damn, that's the same thing she be doing to me. So he tells them about how she keep on saying she don't want to fuck with no other nigga or whatever, but how she, you know, hot and cold or whatever. So he's disappointed when he hears from the guys that she might be playing games with him. And so um, he says that, you know, he's a one woman, you know, type guy. He don't like playing around. He's not the player type. So Fizz say, look, homie, it might be a third party involved in this. So that gets his wheels to turn it. So Mama Lyrica is performing and Mama Lyrica might look like a bunion. God damn it. <laughs> but that old lady can sing her ass off. That bitch was hitting some notes. That bitch can sing better than some of your fucking favorites. I will give it to that old bitch. So she gets done performing and she sits down and talks to little Lyrica. Girl, <laughs> Lyrica, Lyrica. So Lyrica, uh, Mama Lyrica notices the ring on little Lyrica's hand. And so she's, you know, excited for them and says she's ready to start playing the wedding. But Lyrica, like, I'm not playing shit with y'all because I'm, you know, tired of y'all beefing. Mama Lyrica still ain't here for Pam, a.k.a. Timothy Matthew. She's done with her. She's done trying. And she reveals how it's just been her and Lyrica uh, their entire lives and how Lyrica's twin sister died a uh, day before they turned three, which is really sad and tragic. Like, uh, that made me feel bad for the woman. And how her husband, her baby daddy at the time, well, her baby daddy, the kid's father, didn't even come to the little girl's funeral, which was fucked up. And uh, she says that she really doesn't know how to share Lyrica because it's just been both of them. So that made me connect to that, you know, woman a little bit more. So... Gay Willie is in the booth and he gets a, a, a four page letter from Pierce Face saying how she needs a, a break and how she's not going to talk to him until he fesses up and tell the truth. So Safari shows up at Nikki's photo shoot and he got a whole attitude and he tells her about the conversation she had with A1 Sauce and he calls her out about not hitting him up until the next day and shit and going MIA and she gets mad and shit and uh say they only talking they just start talking like you can't be coming to me like that because me and you ain't even like that yet we don't have no title and she said that you know you are you stepping up as a man financially and doing everything else for you to even be coming to me like that and I was like well girl what are you talking about is he stepping up with you financially if y'all he not even your man so how can he be stepping up for you financially if y'all just started talking like you're doing too much I need for her to stop basing everything about a coin yes we all want a man that got a coin and want somebody that's going to take care of you and be there for you and wine and dine you and all that good stuff but if you just looking for a nigga to take care of you then you need to find a better way of thinking like she's very superficial with the way that she comes 
knows and talks about certain things. And so she says he's insecure because of what happened with his uh, ex in the past. And, you know, he's noticing that she's being very defensive, which is how motherfuckers are when they getting caught up in a motherfucking lie. And I just felt like in that scene, they played the fuck out of Sephora because it made him look really lame, made him look really soft because he should have checked the fuck out that little inflatable ass bitch. Like, girl, bye. Um... You know, and he's stating in this scene that, you know, he wants a family and that, you know, he want to get married one day. He got time to be playing. He just looked real soft. Like, I really wish they would have toughened him up in that scene. That wasn't a good look for him. So, at the end of the uh, episode, Lyrica and A1 Sauce are in a classic rented Mustang. And they go to the church. It's in the middle of the desert. The same church that they filmed Kill Bill at. You know, that whole wedding scene where the bitch got killed or whatever when she was pregnant. Um, which lets you know this is so scripted. So he got on a whole suit jacket and jogging pants to get married. Let that marinate. A suit jacket and jogging pants. Okay, so I will say that he's very sweet with her. You can tell they actually do care about each other and love each other. No, despite his pearls and despite the way he dresses and looks and the mamas and all that bullshit. You can tell they actually do love each other and have a really sweet relationship. So at first she's nervous about them eloping, but then she decides to go along with it. They go in a loaf, they say their vows, and now they're married, and now they have to tell their parents what they decided to do. So, all in all, I give this episode a C minus. The best thing about it was that whole rap battle. <laughs> that shit was terrible. Um, right now, I have uh, a new episode of Since You Ask will be up tomorrow night. Go and check out last week's episode. It was everything. If you have a question, um, the link is down below to our email and all of my social media um, sites. Uh, my, you know, usernames and all that shit is down below in the description box. Um, there'll be a new episode of Power this week, so be looking out for my Power review. Also, I have my Beyonce Formation Tour vlog slash review video up now if you have not checked that out watch it now um yeah i love you all have a great week my new novels uh smells like teen spirit volume one volume one heiress will be out in the next few weeks it's a teen novel but my grown adults can read it too it's gonna be everything i'm stepping into a whole new genre expect the unexpected all of my other novels are on sale right now amazon barnes and nobles.com or anywhere books are sold my real name is keisha Irvin, so check out my books love you all and have a safe week Tell me what was your favorite moment from tonight's episode down below in the comment section. Mine, of course, was the fight between uh, Pierce Face and Kaisha. Kyrick, excuse me. That shit was hilarious. So, yeah, make sure to thumbs up this video and share it. Love you and see you all next week. Bye.